Well, good morning and welcome to CCC's residency graduation celebration. Thank you so much for joining us as we honor our residents' completion of our two-year residency program and their accomplishment of gaining their ministry leadership masters through Crown College. Please feel free to utilize that chat feature to connect during this program. This is also a way for our residents to see who all is on here watching since we can't be together in person this morning. And I know many of you are tuning in right here in Omaha, but there's also so many of you viewing in from across the region or across the states. Crown staff tuning in from Minnesota, other friends and family from California to Florida and everywhere in between, individuals from the district and national office, and many from our CCC church family, including host homes, board members, elders, spiritual directors, prayer warriors, CCC staff, and of course, our residents. Our time together here this morning is designed to be a reflection of the past two years and a celebration, a time of encouragement, and cohort two, a time to commission you for what the Lord has next. I wanna begin though with some words of thanks. Thank you CCC Church for your love and support of our program and our residents. Our governing board, our elders, our stewardship team, spiritual life elders, for all of your prayers and support over the years. Thank you to our senior prayer warriors and for all prayer partners for lifting up our residency team and all of our residents, praying for each of us by name. Thank you also to CCC staff our leadership, our management team, and supervisors. What you do matters, and we couldn't be more grateful for the time you have invested into our residents over the past couple years. We wanna offer a special thanks to our Crown College Partnership. Crown has truly bent over backwards to accommodate the uniqueness of doing an educational cohort here in Omaha. Dr. McCracken, Dr. Zell, Dr. Castor, Dr. Peterson, Kathy Sutherland, Wendell, Caitlin, Tiffany from Crown Omaha, just to name a few. You have been kind and supportive, and for that we owe you so many thanks. We wanna give a huge thank you to our host home families. You have sacrificed in ways perhaps beyond what you even expected. You have provided housing and shelter and friendship and have constantly been supportive of everything the residents have done. We cannot repay the kindness you have extended to the individual residents and also the church. We can't recognize you in person like we have in the past, but we are so grateful that you have been so much a partner in everything our residents have experienced these last two years. The Wrights, the Farmers, the Arnolds, the Sessions, Seusses, the Schmitz, the Gentries, the Weeks, the Paladinos, the Elys, you have mattered to us more than you know, and to each of our residents more than you know. You have made an incredible impact on these men and women for whatever comes next in their life. Well, what a better way to start our morning together than by worshiping our God, led by two of our graduating worship residents, Carlos and Danya. But first, will you pray with me? God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ, our residents and our partners in ministry. May this be a time that brings you glory, a time that honors their two years of hard work and ministry. Thank you for working and moving in and through their lives. And we praise you God for continuing to do so even after graduation and in years to come, amen. He never fails me Oh, all my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God Cause all my life you have been faithful 
if you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. through the fire when oh, darkest night you were close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend oh I have lived in the goodness of God in all my life you have been faithful So, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God Your goodness is running after It's running after me Your goodness is running after It's running after Surrendered now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yeah, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. Amen. God is truly good. At this moment, I'd like to hand it off to our academic placement dean, Dr. Carl Pagenkepper. Well, good morning. Yes, I am Carl. Congratulations to you who are graduating from Crown College at Christ Community Church's residency program. Perhaps no song in all of history is more widely known or more often sung than Amazing Grace, penned by a converted slave trader, John Newton, back in 1772. Newton traces his conversion to God sparing his life from almost certain shipwreck when he was 23. One of the verses of the song almost surely refers back to this deliverance. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. I believe you can identify with Newton's words. You have gone through many toils to make it to this day. Despite days of self-doubt, you persisted and have overcome. Despite fear of failure, you persisted and here you are today. Despite financial worries, you persisted and you made it through. Despite discouragement, you persisted and you never gave up. Despite even the COVID-19 crisis, you persisted and have finished strong. And so on behalf of the board and the faculty and the administration of Crown College, I want you to know how proud we are of you. I know that you have persevered through many obstacles to get to this point today. But I not only want to congratulate you, I want to encourage you. Newton goes on in that same verse, that same stanza, and declares, "'Tis grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home." The fact that 
God has brought you through your residency program should bolster your confidence that he will also bring you through your next stage of his calling. Psalm 126 is a great little psalm. It's only six verses long, but let me share just one lesson in it. The first three verses recount God's deliverance of his people in the past. His deliverance was so startling and so manifest that even the nations recognized the Lord has done great things for them. The song pivots with the author's short interjection at the end of verse 3, where he says, We are glad. Then he takes flight into the future tense and borrows a couple of images of hardship from that day and time. Images that everybody would have been aware of. Desert dryness and agricultural drought. Despite these obstacles that he admits are likely to come, he has gained confidence by what God has already done in his life, and that gives him confidence for his future. He anticipates the shouts of joys, of joy that are still to come. God's grace has brought you safe this far, and grace will lead you home. Graduates of the residency program at Christ Community Church, God has done great things for you, and I know you are glad today. But I encourage you to keep trusting our Lord for your future. Tough times lie ahead. There's no question about that. But like the writer of Psalm 126, you can rejoice even now in the future deliverances of our faithful God. And for that, we are glad. I celebrate with you God's greatness and his grace and the joy that he gives you today. Congratulations. Well, let me add in a huge congratulations to all of you residents. I want to let you know that we are so proud of you and for the things that you have done here at Christ Community Church for the last couple of years, who you're becoming in Jesus, and what God has planned for you as you head on down the line. Now, I told you when you very first came in as residents that to us, you are a dream come true. And I mean that in the most literal sense that there have been years where we dreamed about being able to find people who are potential, high-caliber, gospel-believing, Jesus-loving, gifted individuals that are the future of the church, to have the opportunity to develop you, invest in you, and help you to grow so that you're ready for whatever ministry God is calling you into. And I want you to know that that dream birthed itself into prayers for how this might take place. And those prayers birthed into fundraising, hundreds of thousands of dollars in order to be able to support your ability to be here. And then that birthed into selection process and inviting certain people in who we think are people that have high potential for the sake of the gospel. And I wanna say to all of you, you are a dream come true. Thank you for saying yes to Jesus. Thank you for saying yes to ministry. Thank you for saying yes to Christ Community Church as a place to grow and develop. And at this point, our hope for all of you is that you've reached a place where you say, you know what, I feel equipped to be able to do ministry in a full-time capacity wherever I am. That by this point, you have earned a master's degree and learned all the book side of ministry. And at the same time, you've had 30 hours a week to invest in real life frontline ministry underneath a mentor who's helping you to grow. And I think both of those things will equip you incredibly well for that direction that you're headed. Let me say thank you to all of you for the ways that you have invested into Christ Community Church, for the worship services that you've led, for the small groups that you've led, for the students that you've prayed for, for the events that you've pulled off, for the classes that you have taught, for all of the behind the scenes servants roles that you've engaged in. Thank you for your investment in Christ Community Church. I'm convinced that because you have spent the last couple of years here, that God is going to multiply what he's done through you into more generations of Christ community, and our church is better off and healthier as a result from that. So now at this point, God is inviting you to head off into the ministry world to do what God has invited you to do for the future. And my hope is that some of the preparation that you've had here has been unexpected real-life ministry preparation. Because one of the things that I know is that the last two years at Christ Community Church have not been perfect ministry years. In fact, any two years that you would pick at Christ Community Church or any church would not be perfect ministry years. One of the things that we hope you've discovered that uh, during your residency time is that there's no such thing as a perfect church. And even in a healthy church, things can happen in unhealthy ways. 
And sometimes there's things like a ministry transition that happens halfway through your residency. Sometimes things happen like a coronavirus coming into play, where all the plans that you had for ministry have to be scrapped and you have to reinvent and do things in a brand new way. You discover that the people that you serve with have their own flaws and imperfections, and even pastors have their flaws and their imperfections, and you learn to do ministry in a redemptive way. Because that's what ministry is all about, isn't it? It's about redeeming the garbage and the junk that there is in this world and praying it through and reclaiming it for the sake of Jesus and for the sake of the kingdom. We begin with the assumption that we live in a broken world and that we're a part of God's agents to redeem that broken world. And so now, just as we dreamed about you and celebrated having you come in, we dream about and celebrate the future that God has for each and every one of you. All of you will be moving to a different ministry context, most of you outside of Christ Community Church, and you'll find the same thing in those contexts. Imperfect people, a broken world, and a deep, deep need for the redeeming power of Jesus and the message of the gospel. So I commission you to go now, full of the Holy Spirit and power and life in Jesus' name to accomplish his purposes. And I want to leave you with some words that come from the Apostle Paul as he was commissioning Timothy in 1 Timothy. Here's what he says uh, to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 6, uh, beginning at verse 11. But you, man of God or woman of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. And your character matters. The way that you approach life matters. Paul continues on, fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Paul's got active language here that it's going to be a fight and he wants you to be in the battle to take hold of eternal life. Don't just let it flow by as life kind of flows by in the margins, but instead fight and take hold of eternal life and bring it to one more person. And then verse 13, in the sight of God, who gives life to everything, and of Jesus Christ, who while testifying before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep up this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. May you move with the power of Jesus in the flow of the Holy Spirit by the pleasure of the Father for the ministry that God's called you to. Gosh, when I think about my last two years in the residency, um, I'm honestly just overwhelmed with gratitude. And I realize how many people I owe uh, the biggest thanks to. And so if you've been involved in any way, um, thank you so much. It's truly appreciated. Um, speaking for myself and the rest of the residents, we um, are just truly grateful for you. So thank you for all that you've done. Uh, first, I got to thank my family. You guys are my biggest supporters by far. I love you guys. You are the best. Thank you to the CSIS who have hosted me, who um, have fed me, who um, have really just made me part of the family. Guys, thank you so much. And you might deny it, but you guys love me uh, and you do a good job of it. So thanks for that. It really feels like I'm part of the family and I'm super grateful. Thank you also to the residency leadership staff. This program definitely wouldn't exist without you guys. And uh, I would just truly appreciate the way that you uh, pour so much time and so much effort into this. A few shout outs. Uh, shout out to everybody who I've gone fishing with over the last two years. Uh, I just am proud of the fact that I caught more fish than you and I'm happy for the fact that we got to have that time together. Shout out to the student ministry team. Um, you guys are incredible and I've learned so much from you. Man, the residents have, all of you guys have become some of my best, best friends. Man, I am realizing I'm gonna miss this program more than I thought and Mostly the fact that I'm going to have co-workers who I know that at the drop of a hat, they would be there for me. They would help me with, you know, a work project or the homework that I was procrastinating um, or just being there to, to be a friend and support me. Man, I'm going to miss you guys, but hopefully it's not one of those things that uh, disappears. And so I guess what I'm saying is let's stay in touch. I would love that. I'm thankful for each and every person who's been with me through this journey and uh, love you so much. God says, forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert, be present. I'm about to do something brand new. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? There it is. I'm making a road through the desert. 
So my tendency during this residency program has been to look back and dwell on the past and what my life used to look like, which was really nice and comfortable. Uh, but I knew that there was more and I wanted to follow Jesus and find out. And so I began to pray and ask God for direction for many months. And I believe that this residency program is part of God's answer to my prayer. It just wasn't at all what I was expecting. And so in this same passage, what really stands out to me today is the phrase, making a road. And I think that this program, it's part of that road that God has been paving. And it's had a ton of twists and turns. And what I thought would be the finish line is turning out so much differently than I ever imagined. This quarantine situation is so weird and discouraging, but God promises a path. And so I'm gonna keep following Jesus on this adventure that he has invited me to take. I know that he is the only one worth following, and I know that his path leads to life. So just wanted to share that and also say thank you so much to Christ Community for being part of this wild, wild ride. And I am most thankful for all of the incredible people that I've met as part of this program, especially all of my fellow residents. I love you all. And I know that even though the program is ending, many of these friendships will continue for many years, I hope and pray. So that's all I've got. Thanks again. Peace. Hey guys, it's Thomas here. I just want to thank you for the past couple of years. You know, uh, the first day I asked Jenna out on a date, we um, was actually the first day that she was accepted into the residency program. So our relationship has kind of always included the residency program in some way over the past three years. You know, and it, like halfway through her, um, her time, she, we got engaged and halfway through my residency, we got married. And here after this is all over, we have a baby on the way coming in, in September, um, which is super fun. But um, thank you so much for how you guys have poured into us, poured into me. Uh, would really love to thank um, all the supervisors and mentors I've had over the past couple of years. Lisa Ashton, Dave Montoya, Craig Walter, um, and others on staff. Um, you've really meant a lot to me. Thank you to the Paladinos for hosting me my first year of the residency, and also to the Schmitz, who've hosted me and Jenna in our first year of marriage. It's been uh, just the sweetest, can imagine a better place to live. Um, thank you guys so much for how you guys have loved me and my family. Um, love you guys and look forward to the future. Also want to thank my um, fellow residents who, um, you know, I, one of my highlights has been talking about ministry and, and different things, talking about scripture, um, like in our little cubicle thing. Um, it's been really great. Um, you know, we're excited for um, what's next. We don't quite know what that is. Would love prayer for that. We want to start with who we would like to thank and why. We want to start off by thanking CCC for this amazing opportunity to experience residency and get to do it as a dual experience with two churches, both Providence and CCC. I want to thank Emily and Carl for being just the best advocates for us and intentionally supporting us in all that we were trying to run out. Yeah, we also want to thank uh, Providence. Man, you guys uh, are the church that uh, gave us most of our ministry hours. You let us taste so many different forms of ministry. It feels like there wasn't an area this last year that we didn't touch. And so we're really thankful for that. And especially to Andrew, to Jared, to Jordan, you guys uh, have served uh, most directly as our supervisors and our encouragers this last year, these last two years. And so we're just really grateful for the time that you've poured in. We want to thank our host home, Carol and Lanny Meek, who have provided a place for us to stay for free. They were intentional to serve and provide for us in ways that went above and beyond what we could have asked for. Yeah, we also want to thank uh, you residents, the rest of you guys in our cohort. And it really does feel like in a lot of ways we need to be uh, just a really unique family. In this last year, we've been through a lot over these last two years. Appreciate you guys. And connected to that, I just want to thank my discipleship triad with Larissa, Rachel, and Diane Murphy for just giving me a space to process regularly what I was going through in ministry and otherwise. Lastly, I just want to thank Reese for being such an advocate for me and um, just constantly supporting me in this last journey that I've had in the last two years. 
After the residency, Reese and I are going to continue on in Omaha. We're really excited for this. And I'll be coming on staff as a director with Refresh Mentoring. Many of you are probably familiar with Lisa Brown and Tara Weekamp, um, and I'll get to join them on their staff team and continue to grow in my giftings with women's formation and discipleship. The Lord has been preparing us for this step, and ever since we've made these decisions, we just feel the Lord continuing to mm -hmm. affirm, continuing to speak, um, his piece about this and so you want to share what we're you're going to do yeah yeah so for me i get to say especially close to home after the residency i accepted a position with uh, crown college omaha as one of their recruitment managers uh, and so i'm actually going to be officing right out of christ community's building um, during the week so i'm excited for that excited for what god has in store there and along with that um, especially uh, over the course of this year, I've felt uh, God just prompting me to continue to pursue education uh, in the field of counseling. So as I work um, with Crown, I'll also be pursuing my counseling degree with them, working towards uh, licensing in that way. Uh, so really excited about that, really confident that that's what God has for me and for Leah in this next season. So excited to stick around, thankful for the ways uh, that the residency has shaped us and um, ready to open up this next chapter. So thanks for tuning in. Hello, Christ Community Church. I just wanted to say thank you so much for the investment that you've put into my life over the last two years. Um, I specifically wanted to thank all of the supervisors that poured into me over the last two years that um, spent hours listening to me, encouraging me, recommending me books to read, and um, calling out my strengths and also challenging me. Um, I would not have gotten through this program or become the person that I am today without your influence and investment. So thank you so much. I especially wanted to thank Allison, um, Allison Dykhouse, who um, really encouraged and empowered me as a person and as a woman in ministry. Um, I came into this program kind of insecure, um, not really sure what I was doing, and I felt like she really empowered me. Um, she showed me what it looked like to be a woman in ministry and um, just really called the strengths out of me and encouraged me to press into those things. Um, she definitely pushed me in ways I would have never pushed myself and um, gave me confidence and um, she encouraged me not to become another copy of a, a person that I looked up to, but she called me to press into the things that I love and the things that I wanna do and not to be ashamed of those things. And so I'm just so thankful for Allison's influence over the last few years. She's amazing and um, all of the supervisors, we could not have gotten through this program without you guys and we are better because of it, so thank you. Hey there, Christ Community Church, it's your boy, Ethan. Hey, I just wanted to say thank you so much for these last two years. They have been incredible. They have been uh, they have been life changing for both my wife and I. We are we will always look back fondly at our at our short time at at CCC. But uh, there are a couple of people that I wanted to give shout outs to real quick. Uh, my supervisors Alex Ely and Ian Rothel. I appreciate you two guys a ton. You guys were able to call out a lot of leadership potential that you guys saw in me, and so I'm appreciative of how you poured into me that way. Uh, guys, I'm super out of breath. I've been longboarding all afternoon. <laughs> but second shout out, uh, Nicole, thank you so much for all the food. You've kept me well fed these last two years and I may swing by the church for some more leftovers if you don't mind. Uh, a couple others, Myrna and Mark Montaigne, thank you guys so much for how you guys have had my back during those on-call situations. There were, uh, there were some, some interesting ones to be sure and uh, you guys taught me a lot through all of that. And the uh, last couple shout outs I got are for Emily Banta and Carl Peggy Camper. You guys are so awesome. Thank you for all that you've done for this residency. Emily, you've been with us since the beginning. I don't know what we would have done without you. You are amazing. And uh, Carl, I always appreciated our one-on-one -on -one meetings and uh, I sure hope those will continue afterwards. Uh, all that to say, thank you so much, Christ Community Church. You guys are awesome. And I, I hope that many, many more residents get the same experience that I did. Glenn and Susan, thank you for allowing me to live in your home the last year and a half. You've cared for me through my ACL surgery as I hobbled around. You've given me rides when it was too snowy for me to get my car out. Put up with me leaving the house at 5 a.m. for fitness classes or getting home at 1 a.m. after 8.08. And helped me throw numerous birthday parties, theme parties, even a wedding reception. You both have been such a gift and I'm so blessed by your hospitality, generosity, and care for me truly allowing our home to be a revolving door to everyone I let enter, <laughs> to everyone I have over. Thank you also for putting up with my excessive baking addiction, allowing me to use the oven almost daily. God truly knew what he was up to when he allowed this Nebraska farm girl to be placed in a host home with the last name Farmers. 
I love you both so much. I also want to give a huge shout out to my mentors and role models, Dave Montoya, Don Gentry, and Glenn Lawson. Thank you for pouring wisdom and prayers into my life decisions. I wouldn't be headed where I am without you, so thank you. So a couple of years ago, I was at a conference and one of the cool things that happened was they gave me a room on one of the top floors of the hotel. And so one day when I was heading down to one of the sessions, I went in and I, I pushed that button and a, a little girl and her mom got in as well. And the little girl did the worst thing you could ever do on an elevator. She took her hand and pushed all of the buttons. This was like a, the 20th floor of this hotel. I was so stoked to be staying that high and she pushes all the buttons. Her mom is so embarrassed. She looks at her and the little girl's just smiling. And I'm like frustrated that this happened because I know I'm gonna be late to the next part. And so we get down to like the 18th floor and her mom is just so embarrassed. And she's like, well, there's another elevator. We can just get out and take that one. And so I'm in this limbo state of, do I get out? Do I not get out? What should I do here? And so I'm like, I'll, I'll think about it for another floor. And so I decided to stay on the elevator. She exits and uh, I had an opportunity to exit as well. But as, as it keeps going down, I keep processing, what, what are the people that are getting on this elevator that see every single floor being pushed? Are they gonna assume it was me pushing all those buttons? What are they gonna assume? Who's gonna let them know to not get on this elevator or how long it's gonna take? So I decided to stay on the elevator. And, and that day, I think God was teaching me a lesson. I had a destination I thought I was gonna get to at a certain time and a certain way to get to that destination. But with every conversation that I was having or conversations that people avoided having by jumping on the elevator, God was teaching me a lesson. He was teaching me a lesson that we have an opportunity to jump off and off the elevator and go on another route to our destination. Or there's moments where even though we have the opportunity to jump off, we have an opportunity to stay on and God wants to do something incredible in us. That day I had so many conversations that I would have never had with people, conversations just about life, about Husker football, even some conversations about faith and why I was at the conference that I was at that extended for a lot longer in an elevator because I decided to stay on. And other people decided to stay on with me. I know for you all, uh, maybe the journey to getting to where you have been, when you signed up for this residency, it's been a little bit like that. It feels like somebody pushed all of the buttons on the elevator and it took you on a detour that you did not want to go on. And throughout this opportunity, you've had a lot of ways, invitations to maybe get off, <laughs> take a different ride, but you've all stuck around. You've all stuck around for conversations that would have never happened if you didn't stay on the elevator. You've all stuck around for uh, moments where God could meet you that wouldn't have happened if you decided to jump off the elevator and take a different route. I know it hasn't always been easy. It's been annoying. It's been frustrating. It's, it's maybe felt like it's taken a lot longer, especially as it's ended with COVID-19. But I believe uh, that what God has done in your lives by staying on the elevator these last two years is going to pay huge dividends in your lives now and to come. So I'm so grateful for each of you. I'm grateful for the conversations that we've had in my office. I'm grateful for the conversations that we've had on recruiting trips, for the ways that you've taught me and, and helped me in my faith over the last couple of years as I've taken even a course that was different than I thought it was going to be in my own personal life. I'm grateful for your encouragement. I'm grateful that each one of you decided to stay on the elevator, even though he had opportunities to get off. And so I'm humbled to get to be a part of this. I'm humbled by each of you. I'm humbled by each of your yeses to stick around, to be a part of this adventure that God has had all of us on. And throughout this, I've been praying for you. I've been praying a simple prayer for each of you that Paul prayed for the Ephesians. I've sent this to you in emails. I've prayed this for you in cohort. But as I end today, I just want to pray this affirmation over you that comes from Paul to the Ephesian church. And it's the, the prayer I've been praying for each of you. It's in Ephesians 3, beginning in verse 14. It says, for this reason, I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. And I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love that you've, been, you've all been rooted and established. You've stuck to this course the way that God 
has written it for you, that you might have the power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of fullness of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine. And according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in all the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. And now we're gonna have just a word of encouragement from a few of your own residents, Jake and Larissa. We'll see you guys later. God's will for us is to pursue that which gives us life and freedom to find our most authentic self in God. Finding this might demand sacrifice and challenging things. These words were shared with our cohort in the first week of class by the wise Wendell Nelson, almost two years ago. What I did not realize was that pursuing our authentic self in God during our residency journey would not only demand sacrifice and challenging things, but also construction zones, wrong turns, low fuel lights, storms, and roadblocks. The last two years, God has continually created opportunities for our cohort to take the detour. Friends, family, CCC staff, coworkers, supporters, congregants, and peers, Jake and I invite you to journey with us as we take a closer look at some of these detours during our residency journey. The first detour are construction zones. Often, we are annoyed by the fact that we need to slow down when we see the orange cones or the orange signs. We're annoyed that we can't continue on the journey as we wanted to, and I think we can all agree that the residency has been filled with many construction zones that helped us to examine our inner selves. In the slow seasons, in the slow parts of the construction zones, in our depravity and lack of being enough on our own, the Lord stripped us of our foundations and challenged us to take his perspective on how we should live our lives, how the church should look, and help us craft visions for our ministries. The construction zones were annoying, but the finished product is something that we are thankful for. Our second detour, change in direction. Unplanned turns are frustrating because it often adds time, emotions, and stress you weren't planning for. However, wrong turns are also when you find that hole in the wall cafe or the ice cream shop you never would have came across, or maybe even meet someone famous. During our residency, we have encountered many unexpected changes. A supervisor change, a host home change, office space change, change in our bank accounts, and even a change in our fishing, strat fishing strategy when a few of our residents chose to fish barehanded in a novish fishing pond during a silent retreat. Change challenged us to adjust to the Lord in new ways. It also brought discomfort, anxiety, grieving, and a sense of loss, feeling all of us have processed the last two years. But God used these unexpected changes in my residency to redirect many of my hours from adult ministry to college ministry, which rekindled my joy and giftings for college ministry and changed the trajectory of my path post-residency. I'll now be helping pioneer a church and college ministry in Fort Collins, Colorado, something I never would have considered had God not brought a change in direction. Looking back on these unexpected changes, we celebrate God's sovereignty as they created new growth, new relationships, and new opportunities to find our most authentic self in God. Third, low fuel lights can slow us down and sometimes can bring us to a full stop if we are not willing to take the time to refuel. I came into this residency at full throttle looking to lay down my life and be the best resident that I could be. I worked 60 hour weeks while taking additional classes and I thought I was doing what I was called to do. About a semester in, however, I realized that the driving force behind my work ethic was not just a love for God and a love for people, but also a disbelief that God was who he said he was and a lack of understanding of who I am and the role I play in the kingdom of God. A mantra that I adapted was the five truths of humility. You are not God, you have limits and you need rest. You are not the savior, trust God to do the saving. You are replaceable, God is sovereign and can use someone else. You're not important, God is the only one that is needed and someday you will die, but God and his mission are everlasting. These truths call for us to take a step back, to view God as he truly is, rather than to run ourselves until we run out of fuel. It reminds us that we need to stop at the gas station and rely on Jesus to be what moves us through this adventure. Continuing on, we approach the no passing zone. Many of us felt close to this zone almost weekly on Thursday and Sunday nights around 11.30 p.m. With only 30 minutes until midnight, we realized we had not completed our discussion post or an assignment was due. And I'm proud to say that time and time again, we made it through those no passing zones 
getting the assignment submitted by 11.59 p.m., or even better, convincing the professor to extend the deadline. Entering this residency as a girl with zero interest in having a theological discussion with Jake and not even knowing how to pronounce the word hermeneutics before I took the class, I felt close to this no passing zone with many assignments. However, God truly met us throughout the classes, establishing regular rhythms in our walk with God, growing our love for accurately reading the Bible in the context that it was written, recognizing the promise plan God wrote through the Old and New Testament, gaining a greater understanding of concepts like justification, sanctification, and glorification, and then applying these learnings to our life and ministry. As frustrating and real as no passing zones seem, we almost have earned our residency degrees with knowledge and skills that will continue to shape our endeavors in ministry for a lifetime. Fifth, we approach the storms in our journey. No matter how well Larry, the CCC facility <laughs> manager, prepares us on safety measures during storm season, we've experienced hardships and trials through our ministries. We were tested, and through these processes, we were refined. One, one of the first analogies we were taught during the residency came from Professor Wendell. We sat in a hotel room and described diamonds. We talked about the process of how diamonds were made under extreme pressure. It is rare that we will ever find someone who says, I grew a lot in my relationship with God during this season when they haven't experienced any trials. Through the pains, through the lows, through the times that, we, that, that were brought low, we have an opportunity to cling to God and become more like him. Because what else can we do? In this pressure, God often remakes us and establishes new foundations for our lives. We as a residency class have much that we could share about as far as pain and suffering goes, but we can rejoice knowing that God can use all of this for his glory. As Wendell also puts it, we can see the dark moments as fertile soil because our God is faithful. Mm. Residents, may we pray that more storms come towards us in life so we can continue to become diamonds that reflect, that reflect the light of God's glory. And last but not least, we end our residency journey with roadblocks. Now where I'm from in Southwest Nebraska, this is very common. You're on your way to town and as you come over the hill, the neighbors are moving a whole herd of cows in the road in front of you. Now stick with me. <laughs> you're at that point where you're close enough to see town on the horizon, but you're too far for it to be within walking distance. Your only option is to wait in the car for the neighbors to finish moving several hundred head of cattle to the next pasture a quarter of a mile down the road. So we came to this roadblock in our journey mid-March when a national pandemic hit. Meetings and ministry were out of our home. Our final cohort classes were via Zoom. And our graduation at Crown was canceled. A real reality is that we may not all, as classmates, be worshiping together again until heaven. This is not how any of us would have planned to finish our residency, nor what we would have chosen for ourselves. While we're still in the season of waiting for cows to cross the road, I'm reminded of a question Wendell Nelson asked our cohort before we stepped into six hours of silence and solitude at a retreat. Can you just be still with God and enjoy him? Friends, being with God and enjoying him is what the journey is all about and the source where our ministry flows from. Sometimes it just takes cattle along the road to remember God is on the journey with us. Elizabeth Elliot wisely reminds, it is God to whom and with whom we travel. And while he is at the end of our journey, he is also at every stepping place. CCC, family, friends, mentors, as we look back at this two year journey, what better way to prepare us for a lifetime of detours in ministry? What better way to grow and learn and to be equipped for the future the Lord has in place for us. We are incredibly grateful to Jesus and incredibly grateful to so many of you who have been on this adventure with us. The Lord has been so, so good to us. And he has a very unique way of using people during the circumstances to show us his love and to bring glory to himself. The classes, experiences, relationships, and detours of this residency program have uniquely equipped us to pursue that which gives us life and freedom as we found our most authentic self in God. To everyone, I would love to ask you for one last favor before this season ends for us. Would you pray that the residents, that we would know the gospel deep, that we would understand how deeply, how far the Lord came to save us and how much he treasures us and loves each of us, not because we're anything special, but because of how awesome and good he is. And would you also pray that we would continue to make an impact for the kingdom of heaven that all the days of our lives, this family of residents would scatter out into the world, that they would be lights to the world and salt to the earth, proclaiming the name of Jesus wherever they go and however the Lord has gifted them. 
May the God of the universe, the star breather, almighty Father, be glorified through the breath of our lives. Thank you, Christ Community Church. It has been an incredible, joyful adventure, and the best is yet to come. Most of you do not know the name John Hanna. John is an old friend of mine from back in the 80s when I was first in school. And he was one of those unconscious geniuses, uh, primarily in church history. I love to listen to this guy because when he spoke, words came out that were inspiring, to be truthful with you. One of the things he uh, uh, told me over lunch one time, and I've never forgot it, he says that faculty and teachers live in a dilemma. We live in a dilemma. We get to teach and train men and women who will do and minister in places that we're not even qualified to go, things that we're not able to do. The life of a teacher in many ways is lived out vicariously through the giftings of others. And all I can do, frankly, is marvel at what God has done over the years. Uh, marvel at what I've seen him do in you guys. John, the apostle, says we really live when we hear of our students walking in the truth and following hard after the Lord. That is true. I hope you all get to experience that years from now. In Colossians, Paul says, we proclaim him, warning everyone, teaching everyone with wisdom, all wisdom that God provides, that we may present everyone, men and women, complete in Christ. And then he goes on and says, I, I toil, I struggle, I labor. Almost sounds carnal. But what he suggests at the end is that it is worked through the power that works within him so amazingly powerfully. This is a great life verse. I get to live this life out a little bit, and now I get a chance to live it out through you. You will get to impact people that I will never get to know. How cool is that? Some of you may know this, but the term seminary is rooted in the word seminal. It's a seed plot. You have been the soil that we've had a chance to throw some seeds in. Some of them are already germinating, we see them. And I'm convinced the rest of them will because I've gotten to know you. Let me suggest three quick things now. First, to you guys in the residency, I know you have been through transitions. I see it, I've lived it. In fact, my presence is proof of it. I've been here about eight months and frankly, I am the most recent addition to the personnel in this place. Please know that your grace and kindness is appreciated as you've let me invade your territory. Truth is, we don't know the consequences of our investment into you. Based on the indications that I've seen so far, I think we got something pretty cool going on here, and I think you know it, in spite of the struggles and the transitions. Those struggles and trials are critical. Even the doubts that cause you to change your mind about things these are critical to growth. They're critical to who you're becoming. Maybe the most difficult transition is going on right now with the COVID virus. Chelsea last week noted that uh, when she was first here, this place was newly renovated and this place was packed. Now, not so much. The ministry of presence is kind of hard to find. Please know I have struggled with you through some of those transitions, and I want you to know how well you've done. You've been relentless, you've been committed, you've hung in there. Pastor friend of mine, Cal, probably ripped this off, but he got it right. These are the best of times, these are the worst of times, and they're the only times we got. The second, if the first is about transitions, the second is a word of reminder. Ministry is about people. Remember that, ministry is about people. In our cohort, on a couple of occasions, we've talked about the big Bs, the capital letter Bs, well, what it's not. Ministry is not buildings, not budgets, not buzz on the internet, not big events, not bums on seats, as they say in Canada. It's about people. Those are all wonderful metrics, but at the end of the day, it's about people, individuals that you get to touch. Frankly, with you guys, I don't need to say that. I know I don't need to say it, but you need to hear it from us as a church, and you need to hear it from me. Ministry can be a source of amazing joy. It can also be a source of a lot of pain and heartache. 
Paul in 2 Corinthians is going to say, apart from such external things, and he knows a lot about external things that are hard, there is a daily pressure upon me for all the churches. He goes on to say, who is weak without me being weak? Guys, I get this and so do you. You have struggled with the weaknesses of people to whom you've ministered, as have I. The goal of pastoral leadership, and Scott McKnight does this really well, he says it's to create a culture. It is to create a culture in which people, both individually and corporately, can be formed into Christ-likeness, that Colossians passage I alluded to earlier. Scott would call it Christoformity. It's a great term. It's a ripoff from the Lutheran notion of cruciformity, but you get it. Ministry is about people and creating that culture in which people can be formed into Christ-likeness. Remember that. And thirdly, finally, a word about the path God has had for you individually and collectively in his sovereignty. Your education has been a path that the Lord has put you on. It's not found in the catalog or the PR fluff pieces that you get. It's between the lines. It's the part they didn't tell you about. You may feel like you are sliding out. I hope that's not what you're taking away. The curricular pathway that the Lord has for you is outside of the catalog. Each of you, all 12 of you, your names will be read later, some things about you. Chelsea, Jacob, Ethan, Mackenzie, Jake, Leah and Reese, Carlos and Danya, Thomas, Larissa and Rachel, we're glad that you stayed with us through this course now that you're hired here. We are really grateful for you guys. And God has had each of you on your own individual paths. I've sat with most all of you as you have worked through this. We've talked about the challenges that go on inside our cohort. Most of those conversations in cohort are civilized and some of the ones in our office are challenging, to be honest with you. Frankly, the last transition that we have may be the most difficult. Some of you will not be able to say goodbye to those whom you have learned to love in the same way you might otherwise. The Lord's hand and the Lord's timing are never accidental. He didn't get lost in the schedule. Your curricular path was unique to you, each of you. You may say, thank God it's over, and a lot of us are saying the same thing, but realistically, we are grateful for what you went through. We hope you will remember the people, some of the challenges. I hope you'll remember the difficult steps as well, but that also some of the lessons you had to learn in ways that you might not have wished to learn them have been good ones. Never waste a perfectly good, difficult situation. Let me say thanks. Uh, you've let me into your territory. You let me into your turf. Thank you for that. Thank you for finishing well and for welcoming those trials in whatever way you do that have helped shape you and your personal formation. I know we have a couple more convenings yet to do of our cohort. Some of you still have work to complete before finishing your time here, uh, and you all know who you are. But I want to express my thanks in front of all those who are watching. Thank you, guys. It has been a privilege, and I'm convinced that the Lord continues to have your best in mind at all times. And I will continue to wish for his best for you. Joyous congratulations to each one of you. Personally, I'm proud of you, and I know all of us and then your families are all proud of you. I just wanted to say that I'm thankful for you, uh, that I've been encouraged by you, welcomed by you, uh, discipled by you, inspired by you. I'm excited for what God has uh, in store for you, for how you will build his church um, in the same spirit, and I'm looking forward to seeing that and keeping in touch. I just want to let you know I'll be praying for you as maybe some of you know what's next, and maybe some of you don't. Um, but I just pray that God will give you peace and clarity um, in whatever the next step is. So um, congratulations and well done, guys. Congratulations, class of 2020. I am so bummed that I couldn't be physically present with you guys on this big day of yours. Uh, the residency program uh, was definitely, I say without exaggeration, was my favorite thing of my time there. Love the questions you asked, love having conversations with you, really appreciated the help so many of you brought to my ministry when I was there. The way you guys think, the questions you guys were asking, the concerns you had, all those things, you're asking the right questions, you're pressing into the right things, and you're going to be a blessing wherever you go, and whatever capacity you serve in, you are going to be a blessing. 
to the body of Christ. So go with that and congratulations. I just happened to see a picture of you the other day and I looked across you and I just thought, oh, what great people. And I think you'd agree you're different than when you came, but I'm just excited for you. And I know I'm different because of your presence here at Christ Community Church and all the joy and the energy that you bring to Christ Community Church. So we will miss you, but you know you've always got a home back here at Christ Community. Hi, Tom. To cohort two. I love you guys, and you are my heroes. Thanks for helping pave the way for my cohort and the other cohorts to come. Um, it's been great having you here at CCC. Um, just learning with us and helping us do ministry. You've been such a valuable asset, and we know you'll be that in your future walk. Um, we just thank you for your time here. We're always here as a resource for you, and we love you guys. You all are such a blessing to everyone who knows you. Thank you for all of your love and laughter and for just all the amazing ways that you helped teach us more about Jesus. So in the name of Jesus, I bless you with the spirit of abiding. May you abide in him all your days through and in all that you do and bring him glory. So thank you for changing my life. I'm gonna miss you so much. And I wanna bless you with a childlike faith song to ever sing in your hearts. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves you. He is faithful all the way through. God bless you. I have the privilege of reading the names of our graduating residency class of 2020. We will do this a little bit like a regular graduation in alphabetical order, but we'll expand it a bit by including brief descriptions of our reflections of the lives of their ministry among us. These reflections come from supervisors, spiritual mentors, from healing care facilitators, from um, supervisors, and of course myself as a teacher. So the graduating class of 2020 Chelsea Bailey. Chelsea is brilliant, an excellent writer. She is contemplated about her life and the lives of others. She has a spirit that longs to know others and to be known, and she is living or learning to understand the depths of her own soul. And that understanding is giving her tremendous insight into the souls of others. Jacob Bittner. Jacob is a relational, fun-loving extrovert who catches fish with his bare hands at spiritual retreat centers. He will sit with you, listen, and relate. In Jacob's presence, all of God's people really do matter. Jacob is passionate yet lighthearted. He has the strength of a grizzly bear, yet the heart of a teddy bear. He is enthusiastic about life and ministry and has an incredible amount of perseverance. Never mistake his even-handed personality for lack of depth. Ethan. Fritzler. Ethan has a shepherd's heart. He is empathetic and sacrificial to others. Ethan has a determination to learn, is always available and attentive, and seeks to engage the outsider. Ethan has a way of making you feel like you're worthy, worthy of being served, and that you are valuable in the image of God. He drops everything to serve those who are crushed with life, with joy and enthusiasm. You can come exactly as you are to Ethan, and he will always love you the same. He lives out his faith in practical ways. Mackenzie Jansen. Mackenzie is a deep thinking, evangelism dreaming, wordsmithing teacher. She loves to ponder and invite others into the difficult questions of life and theology. Mackenzie is a lover of truth and won't settle for simplistic, easy answers to hard biblical and life questions. She has a deep empathy for those in her generation who are struggling with the faith and with church. Along with her sharp mind, she has a gift of hospitality and a desire and ability to connect with people where they are and show unconditional love. Her curiosity and wonder, coupled with her passion for truth and knowledge is valuable in the kingdom. God uses McKinsey to refine. Leah Peeper. Leah is a sweet soul eager to lend a listening ear. And she longs to teach what she learns from scripture to others. She cares deeply for women and longs to see them understand their identity in Christ and know God more deeply. Leah is a calm, quiet spirit who loves deeply. 
Leah has a compassion and gentleness that can be felt miles away. In her presence, you are seen, loved, and cherished exactly for who you are. She has a passion for ministry and mentoring women, a unique sensitivity to the spirit, and her actions are guided by the word. Reese Peeper. Reese has an excellent mind and brings it to bear on all his t tasks. Reese is a student of the word, a strategic thinker, and a gifted teacher whose messages are biblical and connect with his listeners. Reese is concerned about how to reach people in the future. He has been, begun a pursuit of counseling credentials so that he may be involved with both the psychological and soul care of others. Reese also gives priority to fulfilling his call as a husband and serving and supporting Leah so she can be who God created her to be. Jake Peterson. Jake is a compassionate counselor. His enormous relational capacity reflects his heart to shepherd and care for people in specific and thoughtful ways. He is a true friend and brother of so many. He is a strategic and visionary leader. He has a genuine love and affection for Jesus, and he's obedient to the Lord. He simply knows how to engage people relationally. Jake will simply lead wherever the Lord takes him. Carlos Ramirez. Carlos is a natural leader, a go-getter, and self-driven. His passion, energy, and inner joy spill over into others. He is a leader who fosters exuberant worship in others. He is constant in his encouragement of others and blesses those around him with his gift of encouragement. Carlos passionately believes in teamwork and the importance of the unity of the body of Christ. His energy and joy is contagious and his wisdom is profound. Carlos is quick to pray and quick to wait on the Lord to speak and he loves to listen for God's voice. Holy Spirit power is what Carlos lives and thrives on. Dania Ramirez. Dania is a shepherd's heart, shepherding those around her. She is authentic, real, and honest. When she speaks, it is always from a transparent heart. Danya models humble worship from the heart, desires a deep relationship with the Lord, and advocates for healing. Her thirst for more is never fully satisfied, and it draws her closer to God in all things, through all seasons. When she hears the voice of God speak, she does not waver, does not doubt, but holds fast to every word he speaks. Thomas Tothero. Thomas reflects Jesus in his tender-hearted compassion for the least of these. Thomas loves to think deeply about God, life, and ministry, but not just as thought exercises. He has a deep desire to know and love God better, to live life well, and to do ministry in the way of Jesus. His spiritual mentors say he's insightful, theological, and has a passion to do things well, and that he's accepting of others from all backgrounds and relentlessly gracious. With Thomas, every nation, tongue, and tribe are welcome with an open heart, open arms, and open hands. He is patient, gentle, loving, kind, and a wise leader. He is quick to pray and seek God's wisdom, and when it comes to serving and loving others, he is slow to judge, quick to shepherd in grace, and his faithful pursuit of unity for God's people is what breaks down cultural barriers and promotes acceptance and belonging. Larissa Walk. Larissa has an enthusiasm for life, for ministry, and for serving the Lord. She longs to be in his will and seeks him constantly for his plans for her life. Her compassionate heart is sincere and contagious. Her love for Jesus is above all from the heart and deeply sincere. Larissa loves people and has a single-minded and powerful passion to see them know and grow in Jesus. She is teachable and positive, filled with joy and always wanting to have fun. She is a woman of God with many talents, but she doesn't boast. Her trust in the Lord is steadfast and her passion for adventure is contagious. She is a great disciple maker because she loves Jesus wholeheartedly and just genuinely enjoys doing life with people. While she can imagine living out her life on the farm, she will contribute to the cause of the kingdom in any environment that God places her. Rachel Webb. Rachel is passionate and grounded in courage and strength. She has a compassionate heart and imparts wisdom to those around her. Rachel is attentive and obedient to the Lord's voice and leading. 
She has a phenomenal ability to speak with great grace and boldness all at once. She gives voice to the voiceless and believes deeply in the work of God in all people. She keeps her word and always shows up, being faithfully present in every moment. What makes her a great leader is her unswerving trust in God, her compassionate and welcoming spirit, her delight in community, and her consistent desire for learning. If my heart could tell a story If my life would sing a song If I have a testimony If I have anything at all children tell their children that this be their memory that all our treasure was in heaven and you were everything to me no one there As we come to an end, I get to pray, and I will offer some words of benediction, which are usually a wish that we have on your behalf. So would you join me in prayer? As usual, Lord, you have shown yourself wise and faithful to us all, residents, staff, pastors, friends, and family. We take great joy that you are completing for these men and women what you began several years ago. You've gone before them, you've walked with them through their many experiences, even when they were uncertain. So much of their experience and education was not written in a catalog or recruitment documents, but we believe that you never waste experiences as you mold us for your purposes. You know how often some of us have prayed for these men and women, many who are listening into this time online are also praying, and we know that. 
And now, once again, we recommit to pray and encourage as each finds his or her own future as you direct them. As you have been faithful to us, now make them faithful as well. Faithful to you, faithful to the commitments they make in life. Help them to faithfully represent you in all and to all they encounter. However you lead them in their next steps, their vocations, possibilities of marriage and family, if it be your will, even the locations of their service, we ask that you build in them pure hearts, good consciences, sincere faith, and grant them peace and contentment in what you call them to. We have no greater joy than to hear that our friends are living and walking in the truth. Keep them from falling. Cause them to finally stand in your presence with great joy. To the honor of your Son, Jesus Christ, to whom belongs all glory, majesty, and power, and authority before all time, now, and for all eternity. And now to the graduates. May God Almighty make you faithful in his calling, cheerful in his service, and fruitful for his kingdom. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, and through you, and to you, and to all those to whom he sends you, now and forever. Amen. And let me say thank you to all of you who have joined us around the country online. We're grateful.